Welcome to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show and the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m and Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex the Car Girl Rogio, Hot Rod Bob Beck, plus Dar Hawthorne and Donnie Couch. Ah, look at me, just, just freshly waking up after a long, long nap at the Speed Scene Live couch. Are you Not coming the out Donnie of, Couch. Are either. you coming out of hibernation? It's a war. <laughs> I, I was going to go for a Smoky Bear thing, but it, uh, it obviously didn't work. No. Bruce Parker here. That would be Diana Might. Welcome. And there's Scott Lucky Hudson. Great to be back, Bruce. Oh, man, I'm so glad everybody is back, including wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. We got one more. One more. Oh, yeah. Come on, come it's, on. Okay, Bob back. He already spoke, Hi. I guess. Man, the man who apparently needed an introduction. <laughs> Sorry about that, Bob. Wow. I get even. Oh. I have a microphone. I can we say things. We have our ways of we dealing have way. with you. <laughs> we have ways. Hey, you we know. want to keep you up to date. Like what you're watching right now, this is video from Match Race Madness, courtesy of Motor Peak Motorsports. You guys rock, and you put together great videos as well. 36 pairs of cars just last weekend, right, Lucky? Import versus domestic. Great event. It was rocking. Uh, man, it was a great event. The pits were packed. There was tons of spectators. A lot of people came down. Uh, Bruce mentioned import versus domestic which is a lot of fun. Uh, how about a mother and son? Diane Branham raced her son. Oh, uh, nice. First time ever they had that. They had all kinds of cool matches. Really a great time. Uh, met some new people. Had a lot of fun down there. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later. And uh, we're going to kind of show you, you know, some of the cool stuff that happened at Match Race Madness. And it was perfect weather for it, too, wasn't it, Lucky? Oh, man, it was perfect. The track was hooking. The perf- the weather was perfect. A lot of us went down Friday, and so we were kind of, you know, camping out and partying the oh, night cool. before. Well, cool. And you know what? What's coming up in June? West Coast Classic Bracket Race. That's going to be at the Auto Club Dragway Fontana, June 12th through the 14th. That's mm-hmm. correct. And you know where else I'm going to be, Diana Might? Where? I am going to go uh, back east. I'm going to hit some events back there. Uh, well, I'm going to go to the 10th Annual Ultimate 64 Shootout Ooh. at Mount Park Dragway in Clay City, Kentucky. 64 cars. 64 Ooh. racers, $50,000 a win, plus Dang. all kinds of Ooh. other races like the Triple Tens, different race every day. And you know what? You might actually get a chance. One racer is going to get a chance to take a pass down the track with Jeg Coughlin, the owner oh. of Jegs, in his car. You're going to sit side by side. He's going to, they're going to put oh. all the names in a hat. They're going to draw out a name. You put on your fire suit, and boom, you're heading down the track with Jags. Oh, wow, man. That's Pro Stock champ. Yeah. Very cool. Well, before June, of course, we have May, and May 14th through the 17th at Great Bend SRCA Drag Strip in Kansas. They're going to have the NHRA Divisional. Great track, great people, all concrete, mm. right? Good, good, reasonable prices. It's ran by the nicest people around. Don't miss out. Nice. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great race. Uh, that's really a fun place to go racing. You know, Bob. Yes. What you know? You always give us a little special gas every oh, yeah. <laughs> every week. What's your gas about this week? We're gonna get historic on you. We're gonna talk about a brand new museum that is opening up in just a few days up in Oregon. The world of speed and I'll tell you what it's got some heavy hitters that are running the place you got Tony Thacker you've got Ron Hugley he's gonna be calling in mm-hmm. it's a whole list of people we'll be telling you about we'll show you some pictures and we'll talk about it and these are car people extraordinaire and the museum it's just gorgeous. And by the way, uh, that's Hot Rod Bob Beck. I'm making Is up it? for... Uh, am yeah. I? For yeah, the I'm, I'm making up for are the you, introduction. Are you making up for Is that, that who I am? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, oh. that. We call Hot him, Rod Bob Beck right now. We, we call him Casper the Friendly Ghost yeah. here in studio, but you can call him Bob Beck. Oh. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> in, inside joke. And, 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 <laughs> and right now, I've got my best tan of the year, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, tonight, Diana Might, uh-huh. we are going to have another racer just like you, a young lady oh. that's in Involved in racing, and her name is Erica Ortiz, and uh-huh. she's going to talk about the return of her all-female 
pro mod team. Now I'm not sure if it's really all female. We're gonna have hey, to ask. Hey, why her. wouldn't it be all female? If well, she says it's all female, it can be all female. <laughs> you know, I, I was on. looking at the video and I saw some guys working on the you car. You know, she probably oh. lets the guys take the rocks off the tires or something like that. Yeah, you you know? mean you mean they're like trophy guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, before we talk to Erica, you know, uh, we've been talking a lot about Match Race Madness. Their next event is coming up in August, mm-hmm. and we're gonna keep you updated, but. Don't you think it'd be nice if we talked to one of the racers that's involved? You know, you know, I yeah. race it all the time. Yeah. But let's talk to one of the other racers. We got a great guy that races a good-looking red Camaro, comes out to a lot of the events. And I think it would be nice if we just took a minute, let him tell us about his impression of Match Race Madness. Let's check it out. Talking to Anthony Spikes here, Match Race Madness. Anthony, yeah. good looking Camaro, man. Thank you, thank you very much. How's it running out here at the Barona Drag Strip? Man, it's running wonderful. It's throwing the wheels up, everything's awesome right now. Now you have a Match Race set up, right? What what numbers, or who are you racing? My original opponent was uh, Nick Yoakum, but I found out he had some car problems, so oh. he couldn't make it today, so now I'm just open. You're, you're looking for a match? looking for a match. Wow, well there's a lot of nice cars out here and you know there, there's got to be somebody here. How fast are you in the eighth? Uh, 550. Oh, you're oh, fast. Oh, yeah, there's there's not that many cars out here running 550, so uh, that kind of brought the pool down a little bit. Yeah, Steve is uh, looking for a race for me. Okay. You know, he's got my back. Let me ask you, you got a lot of friends out here helping you out? Who's helping you? I, I got my dad is the crew chief and all his friends are supporters. So they help wherever I need them, here to help me out. And where are you from? San Marcos, California. So uh, this is a track that you race at quite a bit? My everyday track. And tell us a little bit about the car. The car looks great, nice looking red Camaro. What kind of power, what are you running? It's a 78 Camaro with a big block Chevy, about 850 horses, and does the job. And, you know, it's, you're nice and aerodynamic, you know. I drive a 66 Nova, so it's a little boxy, not quite as swoopy. But you got that front end that comes down, and, and it helps you a little bit aerodynamically. Yeah, it helps me cut through the wind, so I get good 60 foot. It's wonderful. Now, if you find a match, you get an opportunity to win, you probably got some pretty good things to say about Match Race Madness. I love Match Race Madness. Look at this crowd. It's beautiful. Where else are you going to get this? Nice. That's what we like to hear. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Good luck today. I hope you get a match, and I hope you take it all the way to the final. Right on. Thank you very much. Motor Peak. You got to get a match there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like that uh, that cinematography. Lucky, we almost got yeah. a clear shot up your shorts at one point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that, that's not necessarily what I would look for. Well, I was. But, you know, <laughs> it, 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 Motor Peak did a great job, and we're going to have more interviews yeah. just like that, more race coverage. But I think we should quickly, before we talk to Eric Ortiz, let's mm-hmm. check in with Paul Williams Specialties and. Let's take a look. Right here, we've got him working on that project motor of yours, Diana, Mike. What's he doing now? Well, these are called uh, lifter gallery vent tubes. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, you know, all the small block Chevys have these holes that allow the uh, to vent, but also allow oil to drip down. And that oil creates parasitical drag on the crankshaft and the camshaft. And really, if you set the motor up correctly with a good oil pump and a good system, you've got lubrication. You don't really need that lubrication. Mm. Really what it does is it robs a little horsepower, and Mm -hmm. it'll also foam up the oil. It'll aerate it, Mm -hmm. which Mm. makes it less effective. So what Paul does is he puts these tubes in, which they're still vents. It raises it up, but it allows the oil to go over to the ends where it won't drip down on your rotating assembly. I never even thought of that. I'll admit, I had no idea you could get that much parasitic drag after just oil dripping on rotating assembly. Well, that's, you know, we used a hamburger uh, oil pan on the motor, and a lot of the job of the hamburger oil pan is all these little tricks, like a windage tray and a scraper, Mm -hmm. and what that does is it gets the oil off the crankshaft. 
And so Paul likes to install these on all his motors, and he mm. puts a little uh, uh, sealer in there. So, you know, when he threads them in and then torques them down, they're sealed in. They don't mm -hmm. come loose. But really, we want to talk about these uh, Comp Cams Affordable oh, yeah. Sportsman Roller Lifters. These are a new product on the market. Comp Cams looked around. They said, what do racers really need? What does a regular guy need? And we're all using really good roller lifters now, and we need something we can afford because yeah. these darn things are so expensive. So they've created a line. These are really high-quality premium quality but they're still rebuildable so you can use them in your motor send them back for a nominal fee they'll go through they'll rebuild them there's two different types they've got the traditional needle bearing or the bronze bushing and like all the high quality ones they've got two of the pressurized edm oil feeds mm. but they also have a uh, edge orifice feed, and that creates very reliable oil feed, keeps the, the roller lifters, keeps the wheels, the needle bearings, everything nice and lubricated. They're a little stiffer, they're a little stronger, you know, as technology increases, they make these better, and they're making them out of 8620 premium steel, and here Paul's putting the cylinder heads on. Now these uh, roller lifters have captured stainless steel link bars, and uh, they make them for a lot of different motors, like big block Chevy, small blocks. They make them for small block Fords and big block Chrysler and Hemi. But they've got a bunch of other applications coming out soon. So if you have a motor that they're not making them for yet, keep an eye on them. Go to compcams.com. And uh, Diana might... Every week we show a little bit more of that you know, motor. And I'm learning so much. You know, he, he had those lifters like in a bath of lubricant before yep. he put them in, before he installed them. So they were getting nice and lubricated and they just kind of slid into place. So now one of you guys can probably answer this. You know me, I'm such an old school guy on engine assembly that I'm just used to having one lifter at a time. Why do you have the link bar? Why are the lifters tied to each other? It keeps the wheel from turning because instead of a flat tappet yeah. or like a hydraulic, like tap it, uh, of course, which yeah. spins. spins. Mm -hmm. Now you have a wheel, and you have to keep that wheel aligned. Right, it's got to be the right angle to hit the cam. Yeah, exactly. and other than that, I'm just going to force the cam to walk out of the block. <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> yeah. it digs yeah. into the cam. Good. Yeah. So you got to keep them parallel. Wow. So this is nice. This is a product. They listen to us. They listen to guys like me that said, "Hey, man, racing's expensive, man. It's uh, you know you're dropping a lot of money on these parts. Help us out." And comp cams listened. Comp cams delivered, and we're using them in Diana Mite's car. And, and we're getting working. some great times with that engine. We are. Oh, and yeah. we want to say special thanks to Paul Williams Specialties, great motor builder. And uh, you can check out, I think we might even have a commercial for him a little later in the show. You might yeah. be correct, sir. Speaking of commercials, Bruce, let's take a commercial break right now. When we come back, we're going to be talking with Erica Ortiz. The return of Erica Ortiz. Mm. I'm Dan Hicks, you're watching Speed Scene Live, and I just won the March Me. Woo! <laughs> At Aeromotive, we believe that performance means reliability, longevity, and durability. Being the best is no secret. By utilizing aerospace processes, procedures, technology, in-house engineering, true applications knowledge, and three generations of track experience, it's easy to see why we're the best. We take great pride in the fact that everything we sell, we design and make in the USA. See our entire line of fuel pumps and related products by logging on to aeromotiveinc.com. Aeromotive. We know it. We race it. We live it. M&H Tires, makers of racing tires that give you the best bite for the buck. You've paid a lot for that horsepower. Make sure you use it all. M&H Tires has the best compounds available for maximum traction. Go to mandhtires.com. That's m-a-n-d-h-tires.com. Buy direct and save at the website and mention the speed scene for a 5% discount. That's right, mnhtires.com. Call them at 661-324-4773. M&H Tires has tech guys ready to answer your questions or to recommend 
the best tire for you. Slicks or DOT. M&H Tires has it all. M&H were the first to create racing tires for muscle cars and also the first to create racing tires for sport compact cars. Legendary M&H Tires. Shop online, mention the speed scene, and save 5%. Get the best racing tires, great personal service, and save 5%. Go to mandhtires.com or call them at 661-324-324. 4773 mnhtires.com Welcome back to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, MH Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFault.com. Good evening, I'm Diana with Speed Scene Live. Welcome back, and we've got Scott Lucky Hudson here to my left. We've got Bob Beck and Bruce Barker back there handling all the controls. <laughs> we want to welcome you to another great Tuesday night. We've got so much action-packed stuff here for you, but we want to let you all know that we had talked to Rich Christensen from Pink's All Out. Oh a man, of weeks he was ago. he was a great video di or interview, Diana. He Mike. was, and you know what? They're coming back. You guys asked for it. You're gonna get it. And tickets are on sale right now for their event at The Rock, Rockingham Dragway, 4th of July weekend. You don't want to miss out. You want to go. You want to. If you can't be a racer, be a spectator. Get on camera. Get on TV. It's so exciting. We want you to be there. Well, you know, Diana, my, they, they want everyone to realize that this show isn't actually being televised. This is a... Oh. What this it's is, it, it's sort of a, it's pilot. a pilot. They're trying yeah. to get network interest. They've got people interested. Mm -hmm. They said, well, let me see what you can do. Well, don't and, pilots like get on TV like it? Well, I don't know. I don't know. But they, <laughs> they're, they want people to know that don't ask them, hey, where can I watch this? Because they haven't quite got that worked out yet, but they're working on it. But a yeah. race, but a race is a race, right? A race I mean, is right. You get a go, you get a race hey, car, you can win some money, it's right? It's fun. It's hey. fun. Yeah. Now you know, uh, you know, I'm a big, big fan of drag racing, and there's a young lady that's been involved in drag racing for a lot of years. I think we should bring her on and talk to her about her involvement with the world of drag racing. Sounds great. Let's go to line one and welcome Erica Ortiz. Erica, welcome to Speed Scene Live. Thank you guys for having me. Oh man, Erica, it's great to have you on the show. This is Lucky. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited to be with you guys today. Well, you have a great story, and of course, I, I, I've been watching you uh, with your career for years and years, and your your horsepower and heels and the whole deal. <laughs> but before we get into that, let's talk about how you were racing back with the uh, the T Bird. I mean, you set a lot of records with your your the car that you ran before, didn't you? We did. We actually um, had, uh, we were the first in our class uh, in a lot of different regards, but uh, the car w was more um, impressive just simply for what it wasn't. And, and it wasn't one of the high budget teams. We did a lot with very, very little. Wow. And that was one of the main things that we were really, really proud of with that car. Well, weren't you like a... Uh, I think it was NMCA, the, 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 the first woman driver to go 200 or the first woman to go six seconds, something like that? It was in Fun Ford Weekend, actually, yes. we In their Pro 5 class, I was the first into the sixes and over 200. Wow. Nice, nice. That's moving, man. That's some good drag racing. Now, you've taken this car, which was a great car, but you decided to sort of update it a little bit. Tell us about that. We did. Um, so after my rookie season uh, in Pro 5 -O back in 2006, we had accomplished a lot that year with very little, like I said, and we decided we kind of wanted to step it up a little bit. Uh, so what we ended up doing uh, in 2007, we began a project to uh, basically redo the car, uh, to strengthen the chassis uh, a bit, upgrade a lot of the components, and then upgrade what was then a stock block at the time. We actually were running a, a stock block. Wow. Uh, a stock 460 block. And um, that was part of the reason that, you know, that, that little engine was so impressive. Uh, but but it was getting to a point where it was uh, it, it just needed to be replaced with something a little bit stronger and something we could push a little harder and, and you know, really see what we were capable of in that regard. So we decided to, to redo that program. And, of course, that was uh, during the time that the economy started heading south. And so that 
project ended up dragging on a lot longer than what we originally anticipated. Now, you changed the body and everything on that car. Was it a complete new car, or did you kind of cut up the old one and turn it into the new one? We took the the car, uh, we took the body completely off, the T-Bird body completely off, and did a lot of strengthening to the chassis. Uh, Dan Parker from Parker Chassis was the one that did those upgrades uh, back in 2007. And then we did rebody it uh, into a Mustang body, so it, it's got the you know the 2007-2009 looks uh, Mustang great. body on it. Looks now. great. We're showing a body or, or a photo of the body right now, and mm-hmm. looks awesome. A couple of turbos sticking out the hood, and it yes. looks. It's, I yeah. don't know. It, it, I know it's newer, but it somehow looks more aerodynamic than the T-Bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Now, I know you mentioned the economy, and that was tough for a lot of racers with, with sponsorship. And, you know, it's hard for everybody because a lot of companies that sponsored racers and got involved had to sort of pull back. And, and thankfully, you know, things are going better now. But you also had some health issues at the same time that kind of took you off track, derailed you from your racing career. I did, actually. Uh, We um, were, like I said, in in process with that build, and I received some really bad news that I kind of struggled with a little bit earlier um, in my 20s as well. Um, Genetically, it kind of ran through my family, and um, I I, I got some bad news uh, when I went into the doctor back in 2007. Uh, They had found some cancerous uh, cells uh, that had previously been removed but were persistently coming back, and... Uh, They were recommending some pretty invasive surgery that would have uh, kind of limited my options uh, in the future to ever be able to have a family of my own. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, it was something that, um, you know, as a racer when I was in my early 20s, really all I ever thought about was being able to race. And and I always thought that I'd, you know, get the chance for the family life a little bit later, uh, you know, after I'd gotten... Uh, through some of the racing stuff, we were doing so well, and I, I hadn't stopped to thought, think about the family side of things. And so, when I was faced with that news, it kind of it, it kind of set me back. Um, I, I wasn't sure what direction to go. I had to focus on on my health, and and at the time, I mean, I was I had was just moved out of uh, the area I was in. I'd moved to a new area, job changed, um, you know, relationship had changed. I had a lot of different changes in my life, and and I wasn't anywhere near being able to, you know, even think about starting a family, um, if that was even possible at that point. Luckily, I found a doctor, though, that uh, was able to um, do kind of a a more risky uh, procedure and, and, you know, uh, struggled with that for a little while, got through and recovered, and then met uh, met Alex, uh, who's who's my husband now, and we were able to start a family, and I had my son in in 2013. Wow, way to go. Yeah, Yeah. nice. Thank goodness there was a happy ending to that story. Yeah, Yeah, we were were all getting a little teary-eyed over here, Erica, to tell you the truth. But uh, in, in the you, the cancer seems to be in remission at this point. Yes, uh, luckily Very I've good. had no other incidents since, and everything has uh, you know the, uh, everything with my son was great, and uh, nice. so I'm, I'm blessed in that regard. Nice. Now, now uh, let let uh, let's talk a little bit about your race team, and we're so happy that that you survived a horrible scare. You tote yourself as having an all female race team and i noticed that you have uh, the young lady in the video uh sitting in the car with you i think she's your marketing person yeah that's debbie she's been with me since the very beginning and um we we've got a a a solid core of girls that help out um i've we're we're a small team of course so there's not a whole lot of us and um i've been lucky enough to have a lot of mentors outside of that that have kind of guided us and helped us out you know where where we lack um uh, there has been times, especially at the end of 2006, the last two races of the Fun Four Weekend Championship, as I, I run it up for the championship that season, but the last two races when we were down to the wire, I actually had to load up the truck and trailer and go by myself and was mm-hmm. lucky enough to have some friends out in those areas who helped me unload the trailer, uh, you know, line me up on the on the starting line and, and 
you know, when you're a small team, you kind of do whatever you can and, and get the help you need, you know, in the areas. And I'm blessed that I've had a, a lot of help like that, that from friends all across the country that I've met through the racing that have, have stepped up to, to lend a help in hand. Erica, this is Hot Rod Bob. When did you start racing? How old were you? I actually came about racing, um, not in a, in a traditional sense, so I really had nobody in my family that had anything to do with motorsports or, or racing. Um, I came about it, I just, I loved cars in high school, and I bought my first Mustang right as I was graduating high school and started taking it out to the track, and that's and that's how I began. Wow, what did your parents think about that? <laughs> uh, they were a little uh, skeptical at first. They kind of questioned, you know, what, what was going on, but uh, they slowly, you know, kind of figured out that there was no changing or slowing that, that <laughs> uh, drive, <laughs> and have been supported ever since. Wow, that's great. So now you've moved up from, you ran a stock Mustang, basically, to a turbocharged Thunderbird. That's a big step. That's a big step. Now a a turbocharged ProMod Mustang. Yep, yep. I started, I actually started out in the drag radial class, and that's, back when I was running drag radial, we were, uh, you know, in the eights on, you know, on an and that was a big deal back then. And now you see these these uh, radial cars are running in the sixes and and just absolutely flying. So it's it's been a, a long progression to see you know what racing has become. And in the last you know ten years, I kind of feel like uh, it's uh, just flown by the the advancements you know of every of all of the progression and and you know how fast they're going now. It's it's kind of crazy but i'm excited to be part of the pro mod uh crew i've I've got some catching up to do for sure in the time that i've been you know away uh learning the new technology and and the different direction that they've all gone erica who are your sponsors who are the people that are helping you out well we're you know we're just getting kicked back off so of course you know i am i'm we're very grateful to the people that have stood beside us you know through all of that you know through the downturn and when we had to kind of park the the car for a while so of course brisk usa was uh, on board with us in the beginning and they helped us uh and you to even be able to begin the mustang rebuild process so i'm extremely grateful to them um trick flow had helped us out with some of the engine components um we just uh signed uh, excessive motorsports who is helping us out with some of the rotating assembly and balancing and uh they're they picked out our um our piston uh, configuration and they've got some uh, custom pistons being ordered for us and so they're helping us out with some of that work um, Harlan Sharp and uh, RJS Racing um, we've got a, a pretty strong mix and we're, we're always of course looking for new uh, sponsors to come on board we've got some you know work to do yet on the car so we'll be uh, looking to try to to bring on more on board in the future and and you know get this thing back together there's some more there's some more room on that car for sponsorship names right (laughs) definitely where are you going to be racing next where's the first race you're planning on attending well we're still kind of uh learning the 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 now the uh the navigation out there right now and kind of finding where the car fits best because it has been so long and and the classes have changed so much Right now, we're looking at, at uh, possibly NMCA uh, as well as some of the regional uh, pro mod events to get our feet wet, and then go from there and see uh, you know how we do and and where we're headed next. Great. Now, if anyone wants to follow your career, what website is best for them to to go to? I know I've been going to horsepowerandheels.com. Is that the best place to follow your career? It sure is. That is uh, that is the website uh, that I created um, for the team, but it, it has also grown uh, beyond that as well. In, in in the time that I was away from racing, I used it to kind of focus and support and promote women in racing in general. So not only can you read up about our team and what we're doing, but you can also read about other teams and uh, other racers out there that are are navigating you know the male dominated motorsports realm as well. Nice, nice. Well, we wish you the best of luck. We're we're happy that uh, you know you had a long, hard road. We're happy that it's come out with a happy ending at the end. And uh, you know we can't wait to see you in your car out there racing and going rounds. And uh, I think it's just wonderful to have you back and and welcome back to uh, racing door car racing. And uh, we're gonna follow you. And we would just love to see you out in the winter circle someday. 
Well, we hope to get there soon. So thank you so much for having us. And uh, we love listening to the show. And we can't wait to update you about where it goes from here. Great. S- Thanks sounds, so much. Sounds great, Erica. Keep in touch, okay? Uh, we will. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Man, I, I was so glad there was a, a happy ending because yeah. I was starting to choke up a little bit. Well, you know what? I, I think we we were all kind of choking up a little bit. But there at the end, you know, she came through. She got a son. She's married. She's back in her race car. She's doing great. And that's what we like to hear. That's yeah. what we like. Now, Bob. Yes. You've got a great person uh, uh, that drives a beautiful funny car that I see at a lot of events I always admire. Looks beautiful. It's a striking image, striking paint job. Why don't you bring him on the show? All right, with us tonight from the world of speed, it's Ron. How you doing, Ron? I'm doing good, Bob. Yourself? I'm doing good. Thanks for hanging on and uh, just a normal introduction. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bob Beck, and you've got gas, and we're sharing it with Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the museum. Well, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, World of Speed is a new uh, motorsports museum that's opening uh, this coming Friday here in the uh, uh, Portland, Oregon area. We're just about uh, about 15 minutes south of, of Portland, uh, right on the way to Woodburn Drag Strip. We're kind of uh, we're real close to a drag strip as well, and this is something that we've been working on for oh about the last uh, about the last three years. When I'm looking at the photographs that you've got on uh, online, this is a very high class type facility that you you've got going I mean this thing is this is this is high tech and it is not your typical well I got a garage and I parked my cars in this warehouse or something like that this is really a neat facility it is uh, initially we started out we were just gonna have a small small facility with you know 25 30 cars and and just be a great place for car people to hang out and the building that we're in uh, kind of became available and, and was brought to us. Uh, it's 80,000 square feet, Jeez. and it just begged to – it was kind of like an empty canvas, shall we say, that we were able to uh, do with as we liked and uh, turn it into uh, – what you're, you know, what you're seeing now on on uh, your screen, um, we've got a mid-century modern theme that goes along here between the furniture, uh, the decor, um, the building itself. You know, it 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 really lends itself well to the story we're trying to tell, which I I really like to hearken to the golden age of motorsports, basically post-war up to the early 80s when just about when sponsorship really started to take over but back in a period when that it seemed to be a little bit more pure and you know a group of guys could get together and and uh, you know put a top fuel car together or a, a couple of guys could go out and uh, and field a, a, a stock car and um, that's that's really what we're trying to celebrate all right we've got we've got a video here of you uh, trying to teach someone how to react to a Christmas tree. <laughs> let's, let's watch this now. Here at the museum, drag racing, they use what they call a Christmas tree to start the race. Two competitors, they roll their race cars up to the start beam, they get it in the pre-stage, then they hit the stage bulb. That means that they're ready to go. And then when the yellow flash, they, they smash the gas and, and away they go. Um, right now I'm joined by our guest services coordinator, uh, Chris, uh, Christine. She is. Uh, she's going to try and see if she can uh, beat the Tiki Man. So uh, let's uh, let's see how we do here. You ready? Yes, definitely. Oh, look at that! Oh, yeah. Okay, one more time. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I read lit. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, you're right. a little early. Oh, Sixty-eight. Okay, one more time. Okay. Two out of three. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. It's the only video game I've seen kind of thing with a roll cage, Ron. <laughs> you know, Ron, well, you this know. is this is so cool. You get people interacting with the displays. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's uh, it, it really turned out quite well. Um, it's uh, a portatory system that we kind of modified. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have asked, you know, what's it like to be in the funny car or drag, you know, dragster, and you know, this is uh, it's just kind of fun. You can, you know, we built a couple of funny car type cages, and you got the butterfly wheel, and you, you kind of, you know, you, you get a little bit of the feel as 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 much as, as close as you can. What I've really enjoyed is watching, um, you know, parents race their kids, grandparents race their grandkids. Um, it's been it's been a lot of fun to see that, and they just it. Uh, 
uh, got to have a hard time with the employees. A lot of the employees like to sit there and, and uh, play with it as well, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that it's like, come on, we got to get to work. we got a museum to finish. Hey, All right, hey, we're doing a bur- we're watching a burnout of you, Ron. We want to validate what you do. You're not just a, a museum guy. You are actually a driver. You drive a funny car, the Tiki Warrior. Well, I actually tell people I'm just a car guy that's a curator in training. I'll, uh, <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever quite get the hang of the curating thing. I, I, I'm really blessed. I've got the greatest job in the world. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the tiki car. That's what. Uh, that's kind of what. One of the one of the things that kind of got this uh, the whole museum thing going when uh, when I got together with the founders and they talked about wanting to do something. I was you know driving the race car and uh, uh, the tiki's been it's been just absolutely fantastic uh, experience. Uh, started basically with it in 2009, and here's at Bowling Green. I, I love going back to Bowling Green and Bakersfield. Uh, the fans in Bowling Green are just incredible, and um, it's uh, a cool place. to mm-hmm. the, the vibe is just its just really a neat vibe to go back there and, and have fun. You know, Ron, Sports you're uh, kind of well-known for doing huge, giant burnouts, too, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody asks me why I do those big burnouts, and I say, well, if I don't, I'm only in the car for six seconds, so I try to keep, <laughs> extend my time in the car as long as possible and uh, uh. it's it's a lot of fun you know it's uh, uh it's i'm uh, with an alcohol car it's you know it's no problem i can do it uh we can run it down i've more than once uh you can ask uh, bob or or, or condit at bakersfield any of those guys they know i've i've tripped the beams with the car <laughs> and uh, on a burnout but you know what's what's even better is to do that big burnout and put on that great show and then come back and uh and run a seven, you know, run a seven flat in the seven O category, or for the Northwest Double B, we go out and run six seventy fives, and and uh, a lot of people think, well, you can't do the, you know, you can't make your car run, you got to do a burnout, but no, we can. Uh, we this last fall we went six thirties at two hundred twenty mile an wow. hour with the car, so it's. Uh, I've got the greatest car, uh, car owner, um, crew chief, team, they're the best. All right, now, you got a, a pretty uh, substantial group of people that are going to be running this museum uh, w- with some great credentials. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Well, uh, Tony Thacker kind of came on. Uh, oh, Tony was, uh, Thacker. We love that guy. Yeah, he uh, he came on board uh, kind of. I well, when he got available after his uh, time with NHRA, I contacted him and said, "Hey, we're doing this deal." And so he came up, and and he and I kind of worked hard with the founders and put this deal together. And uh, uh, so we're getting ready to go through the opening. Um, Tony, uh, he is uh, he's decided that he's uh, he's going to retire uh, after this grand opening. He uh, really? he's uh, he's lived a great life of of. Uh, with the hot rod world and he wants to go out and and experience life uh he's got a his family's still down there in pomona so it's been kind of a challenge for him you know being working up here and having the family down there but uh, we've got some great we've got some great people that are behind this and like you saw christine the guest services gal um we've uh our our volunteer coordinator charles e uh, we've got an education component with this museum we're trying we're going to actually start working with kids uh teaching them some of the basics uh this summer with some summer camps and then we go on into you know so many of the schools have taken away the trades whether it's automotive shop you know machine shop electrical those kind of things they the schools can't afford to fund those projects anymore and there's so many kids out there that are kind of lost they've kind of fallen through the cracks so to speak because they don't fit into the four-year college program but yet they you know they might have an interest in this and so we're going to start taking an active role uh, john omschler our education director he's heading up that program and um we're going to try and, and and get kids back involved um you know the the motorsports is kind of the hook you know you see some cool race cars it seems kind of neat you want to go see that and then they find out there's an opportunity for them to do something in in the world of automotive Good. That gives them an, an alternative to that. Now, we're, again, I'm still I, I'm really uh, taken back by the quality of the displays and the cars that you're showing. It, it, you know, you go to some museums and there somebody's paying to store their car there. They're not the greatest museum pieces, but you've got some high dollar pieces there. Yeah, that was. Look at this display here, where yeah. you sit in the car and, and you can look out, and it looks like is that like El Mirage or what? What are you looking at? Is that a track in front of you? 
Well, I think actually somebody probably spun out on the infield. That's one of our simulators. We've got oh, okay. three. We've got three uh, simulators. That's Johnny Benson's 1998 Ford Taurus that he ran for Roush Racing. Wow. Uh, we've also got Adrian Fernandez's 1995 Lola that he ran in the IndyCar series, and then we've got a 1962 uh, Lotus 2022 Formula car. Mm. We've taken real race cars and we mated them up with a uh, wraparound screen and turned them into simulators. They're they're fully immersive. I mean, you literally, we've had professional drivers get in and you can't get them out. It's, it's, it's as close <laughs> to driving a race car as you possibly can get without actually driving one. Don't you think that's a great way to get people that maybe aren't currently gearheads or racing fans and, and, and you get them involved and you get them in the cars and you get them in this interactive stuff and they become more interested in it? Absolutely. I think that... Uh, you know, we've got, uh, you know, there's, there's, the, there's the cat, there's the race fan, and then there's the casual fan. And the casual fan really kind of, um, they're taken aback by the opportunity to sit in a real race car and realize that, you know, how many people actually get the chance to sit and drive a car that raced at the Indianapolis 500. Mm-hmm. And with our, with our Indy car, you know, you could get in it and, and I, you see people become, you know, little kids again. <laughs> and, um, it's just it's really exciting and uh, that they get the opportunity to do that but they're also an educational tool we can use them we can uh, the, with the, the computer programs that we can put within it we can work with t- kids we can teach them about texting and driving and, and and how that's a problem we can show them how you know if they stay up all night and then they get in the car they can be drowsy drivers you know or sleep deprivated drivers and they see how their reaction times um, you know fail so uh, there's an opportunity for that as well and that's what's uh that's what's really exciting that it's it, you know it's a cool looking it kind of looks like a toy and it's kind of fun but it can also be used as an educational tool all right world of speed now this opens up this friday the official opening date is that correct yeah friday we op- uh, friday's our grand opening uh we're going to have our uh what I like to call our ribbon burning ceremony. Most people, you know, when they when they have a, a ribbon, you know, when they they cut the ribbon and open the doors, and and um, uh, we've got, like you say, we've got a lot of great cars here. One of the cars that we have is is uh, Dave Huff's 1969 Don Tuttle built uh, Nanook fuel altered, Ooh. and uh, myself and my and my crew chief Scott Davis, we just. Uh, Convert, um, converted it over. We put the nitro engine back in it, and uh, so we're going to fire that up, and we're going to shove that through the ribbon. So that's, gonna, <laughs> that's how we're going to kick off the party. There you uh, go. We've got, we've got Dave Huff and his sons going to be here. We've got a lot of great, a lot of great race car drivers. Claire Sanders, uh, Jungle Pam's going to be here. Um, Rob Bruins, uh, 1979 World Champion. Uh, Herm Peterson. Dick Calavota, um, Danny Thompson's coming up. He, we've got you know his father's cars here in the museum. Yeah, I saw the that. Challenger, that's the, that's the four as well as the assault and the attempt. Um, Janet Guthrie, she's going to be one of our keynote speakers. Um, a lot, some of the fans out there may not know who Janet Guthrie is. She was the very first woman to actually pass a rookie test, and then the following year she was the first woman to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. Right. Huh. That was back in 1977. No, oh, that that's great. I mean, I, I am just really impressed with what you've done, what you're doing, and what the plans are. This is a this is a really strong effort. Now, I've got a question. I'm looking at the Petty car. Was this his first Chevrolet? Do you know? Uh, I uh, the, he actually um, the gentleman that I talked with back at at Petty's place. There was a Chevrolet that he did drive in the late. Uh, late 50s in that convertible class okay. a couple of times, but that is his return. Or that was his first General Motors product that okay. he actually went out mm. and uh, campaigned in the Grand National Series. Uh, uh-huh. That was he had just come out of Plymouth. They'd had he'd had a long dry spell. The car that we have is the is the Monte Carlo that he comp- yes. uh, competed with in the 1979 season. It was a road course car. It was the car that took second at Riverside. It was also his backup short track car. Um, a lot of people may remember that 1979, that was the year that he broke his, his winless streak and uh, won the Daytona 500. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a General Motors product. It's a cool car. It's just, it's absolutely just flawless and uh, it, it's race ready. It's ready to go. Yeah, that, that car looked familiar because I was working for Stock Car Magazine at the time and we interviewed him at Riverside. 
Yeah. And uh, yep. yeah, that was his that was his switch to Chevrolet, and it, it was just it was a whole new learning experience for him. And you've got that on the display. I got to come up just to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got that one. We also have um, the car that's affectionately known as Buster. It was Jeff Gordon's car. It was uh, chassis number 2406, the sixth car that Hendrick had built. Um, it was a car that he ran uh, in his rookie year and then in 93, and then in 94 he also ran it with the Lumina body. They rebodied it for 1995 with the Monte Carlo. He, run, he won Bristol and Dover with that car, and then he ultimately won the championship. That was his first of four uh, championships that he won and we have that car on the floor we also you saw on the daytona wall we've got uh kale yarborough's um, oldsmobile up there on the top mm -hmm. uh dale jr's uh rookie car from night uh, from 2000 is monte carlo um you see in this image right here we got danica patrick's uh formula atlantic car and then over to the left is Rolla Volstead's uh, 1965 Indy car. Rolla's a local gentleman uh, here out of the Portland area that built that car. He basically built that car in his basement. Wow. He had a shop underneath his place, and he built that car. They qualified with it at the Indianapolis 565. Wow. You, you've got some quality cars. I mean, the displays are are, are expertly done. I mean, they're, that's that's just state-of-the-art the the uh, displays are amazing but the cars too they just look perfect and how did you amass all these rares race cars well you know it um it's kind of interesting there's there's a lot of great there are a lot of great auto museums around the country um you know but for the most part you know they're they're somewhat um specific to a certain genre of, of racing, whether it's, you know, NASCAR in Charlotte, uh, Indy cars at, at Indianapolis, uh, Sprint cars at, at Knoxville, or, or drag racing in Pomona. Um, but very few museums have all of them under one roof. And a lot of the people that own these cars are really excited about the opportunity to showcase their cars in a museum that has other forms of motorsports because it's, you know, something that you haven't seen in the pictures. Uh, we have uh, two hydroplanes. We've got the Miss Century 21, the, the, the Miss Driftway boat from uh, 60, 61, and 62. It was a championship boat. We also have the Miss Budweiser from uh, 69, mm. 70, and 71. Um, we've got six championship boat years of boat racing between those two boats. Uh, we've got a drag boat in here. And uh, something we just got in today uh, I'm really excited about. Uh, it's called Old Number no. One. It's a 1929 Bentley. The car Ooh. won Le Mans in 1929 and 1930. It won, it won Brooklyn. You go and just search uh, Old Number no. One. Yeah. It's an absolutely incredible car that's been restored. Uh, it's competed at... Uh, at uh, Laguna Seca, you know, in the historic races there, um, it's it's really a lot of fun to be able to work with these people and get these cars. As we've as we've grown, people have realized that we're you know we're serious about this, and it takes a lot of trust for somebody to turn over their car, you know, to put it on loan, to put it in a facility, and um, but they're really excited to see their cars here in, in this place. All right, Ron, that is great. Now, what is the website that people need to go to to find out more information about the World of Speed? You can catch us at worldofspeed.org. Um, we can you can keep up with there. It's got information uh, as far as what's going on here at the museum, uh, membership information. Uh, we're open uh, Tuesday through Sunday, 10 to 5. Uh, it's got hours. The price to get in is 10 bucks. It's just 10 That's bucks for bad. an adult, and um, uh, it's a very affordable opportunity for people to come see it. Uh, you can also follow us on uh, Facebook at World of Speed USA. Um, I, there's a Twitter thing. I'm not quite up to speed with all of that latest electronic uh, uh, technology, <laughs> but uh, I do know the Facebook thing, and I'll, you saw the face, one yep. Facebook post. It's been a lot of fun to, to see that and uh, see people can reconnect with uh, some people. They just go, oh, man, you know, uh, that, my dad worked on that car or something like that. It's been really great. And where's your next race? Where are you racing next? Well, the Tiki car, we're going to start, uh, we're going to hit it hard uh, here probably about the end of May. We're going to go out and test. Uh, got some new got some new components to put in the car. Uh, the first Northwest Double B Funny Car race will be at Woodburn, the Rose Festival. That's the first weekend of June. Unfortunately, I wish I, I, we miss out. We didn't go to Bowling Green last year because of the museum, and um, we're not going to make it again. 
Uh, just it's a long travel. I mean, it's ten days on the road for me. Yeah. And uh, but we'll be uh, we're we're kicking around. We we might be down to Bakersfield for the reunion. Um, We've got the three races at Woodburn, and then we race at Mission and Boise. We've got a eight race schedule so far with uh, with the Tiki car, and uh, maybe we'll bring a cackle car out or two. All right, sounds great, Ron. Thank you very much for calling in. Say hi to Tony for us. We we haven't seen him since he went up there, and uh, say hello to Gwen. I will. Uh, thanks a lot, Bob and uh, Lucky and Diana. Hope to see you at the racetrack soon. Ron, great, great care, talking Ron. to you. Thanks so much, and give our regards to Tony. He's a great guy and a big asset to your museum. All right. Bruce, let's take a commercial break, and when we come back, we've got what's going on. We're going to tell you a little bit about some of the races coming, and, hey, we might even have a little Donnie Couch surprise interview in the wings. Hi, I'm Adam Sorokin. I'm the 2012 Nostalgia Top Fuel Champion. When I'm not driving my race car, I'm watching Speed Scene Live. Take your vehicle's racing performance to an all-new level with a custom racing engine from Paul Williams Specialties. Put PWS's 30-plus years of experience to work on your race car, muscle car, any type of high-performance engine. PWS can build your winning combination from scratch or refresh and improve your current engine. Working on a project? Don't waste money through trial and error. Consult with Paul Williams first. Wrap up your performance with Paul Williams Specialties. Helping championship-level drivers become champions through better performance and reliability. For over half a century, Curry rear-end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. Some of the world's most capable, hardest-working vehicles depend on Curry gears, which is why you can too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock-crawling four-wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock-solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installations options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra-strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts, like correct link steering systems, keep your four-wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid, purpose-built suspension and brake components, and you've got one tough, ready-to-go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry Rear End. Talk to the experts at 714-367-2679 or view the complete line online at curryenterprises.com. that has served to defend our great country and our freedom. All of us here in the United States of America would like to offer our sincere appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done. To every family that has made a sacrifice for us, we thank you. Sixty years. That's a long time for a company to do any one thing. Doing it right while sticking to your founding values. Now that takes hard work and dedication. For 60 years, Hetman's All-American Workforce has been devoted to manufacturing the very best headers any team of craftsmen can build. That's 60 years of cutting, 60 years of bending, 60 years of welding, more than two million in all and every set made right here at home. At Hedman Headers, we build all American horsepower, then back it up for life. Hedman Headers, made in the USA. I'm Daryl Ehrlich. I just set the national speed record in top fuel drag boat racing at 262 miles an hour. Speed scene live, baby. Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. 
brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheVote.com. Welcome back to the show, Speed Scene Life. You know, uh, Donnie Couch is not only one of our favorite people to do interviews, but I think he's probably the best guy out there. Why? I don't know. He just has that personality. He's smooth. He just flows right in. And it's, tonight, it's charisma. Like charisma. Is charisma. That He's yeah. got yeah. a boatload of it. Let it, me tell you. It's spelled with two letters: B and S. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. We're going to be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I would like. I would like to bring in uh, Donnie Couch right now, and he's going to talk to Dave Grubnick. Donnie Couch for Speed Scene Live 2015 Winter Nationals. First race of the year. David Grubnick, we're used to seeing you in the driver's seat, my friend, but you yeah. show up here. Brand new team, crew chief with Lance Larson, and uh, you got a big smile on your face. Yes, it's, you know, I've always been involved in the technical side, as you know. Yes. We go back 20 years, so um, more, actually. More. Uh, more. Um, so, you know, it's now, the timing's right. I need to do this, so, you know, I've had so many things on the back burner, all these things that I've sort of looked at and wanted to mess around with, but, and you know, and that's something we'll look at down the road, but for now, we're sticking to the standard model. We're working on this setup. Um, two months ago, we had nothing. So, you know, this team's done an outstanding job to get all the assets in place. So we, we bought a car from the, the Torrance Group, so we have a base set up, and now we're just refining it and, and moving forward with it. So we're just doing baby steps. We only had about three runs with it in Vegas. We came here, and, and here is a test session for us. That's why the car isn't gone to the finish line yet. So once we achieve all our objectives from, you know, we have to have all that handled up to the 330, and once that's done, then we can move forward with it. Yeah, well, Dave, it's great to see you. How does it feel to be on the start line standing behind a car when you're used to driving it? It's got to be a different feeling for you, right? It, it is, and it's good. It's good when, when you sit down and you crunch all the numbers out and you look at everything, like that last run we did, and, you know, it was a planned half-track run. So if, if everything works and the numbers come in line, shutting it off at half-track, it should roll through for an 86. I was hoping for, like, an 86, a 90 flat, something like that. Clay went a little bit further and he clicked it, but, you know, I put an 83 up, and it, it's gratifying to see those numbers come up when everything works. So, no, dude, it's, it's good. I enjoy it. Yeah, well, especially first race of the year, no testing. Brand new team. You throw everything together. Hey, yeah. you put some talent together like you and Lance, and everything starts to gel. You guys are going to be a team to reckon with. Well, we hope so, but, you know, it, it's sort of like, you know, it's one thing. You can stay somewhere long enough and figure out how to run one of these cars. So, you know, the key is to adapt it to all the different conditions and the different racetracks we go to. Each track has its own personality. So, you know, we, it, it's still early days, but, you know, we're heading in the right direction. David, how many races this team are we going to see at? The plan is we're doing them all. We're doing all the races. Um, the owner is committed. Um, you know, we have to build a, we've obviously got to build our spare inventory. We've got to build a lot of, you know, we have to have the resources in place. So, you know, it'll be a slow start for us. We'll just tiptoe our way through it until we can build all the necessary assets we need. But yes, we're going to them all. We're going to spend all year learning how to get this thing working as it should so we can give them a run at the end for the last six races. All right, he's Dave Grubnick, one of the most popular drivers in the sport. Now gone to uh, the crew chief status and big smile on his face. So we wish you luck, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Donnie. Right. Thank you. Well, it's great to see him yeah. at the track and, of course, Donnie doing the interview. Diana, Mike, what time is it now? Well, you know, it looks like it's almost the top of the hour, so I would expect it is... What's going on, right, Lucky? We want, to, <laughs> we want to thank our sponsors. A special thanks to Curry Racing Rear Ends, Headman Hustler Header, Aeromotive, m and TheFoat.com. Did I leave anybody out, Lucky? Well, let's throw LAT Racing Oil in there because we've been right. using that LAT Racing Oil. Absolutely. And their ATF, and, man, that's the best stuff out there. And uh, there's a lot going on coming up. In the near future, and of course, uh, May 15th through 17th, we got a couple of events going. We've got Eagle Field has a three-day event. I think I'm going to head on out there. I'm going to go back in time with mm. Flag Star Drag Racing and many legends of the past. And if you're not on the West Coast, if you're closer to, say, Kansas, mm -hmm. Great Bend Drag Strip in Kansas has an NHRA divisional, and you can head on out there and race or watch or do whatever you want. I love that track. And we want to let everyone 
everybody know, don't forget about the Pinks All Out at Rockingham Dragway. That's The Rock. It's going to be June 30th through July 4th. Tickets are on sale now. Visit Facebook Pinks All Out Week. All right, plan your summer June 12th through the 14th. It's the 10th annual Ultimate 64 Shootout at Mountain Park Dragway in Clay City, Kentucky. 64 racers, 50,000 to win, plus lots of other races like the Triple 10Ks. And you might get a chance to make a pass down the track with Jeg from Jeg's oh, whatever you yeah, know, arts. It's the only race involved that has a free racer barbecue and mm. a free racer golf game. Wow. And you're going to be there. And I'm going to be yeah. there. I'm going to be doing Are you giving them away up. those tickets or those tickets, those stickers that give a tenth to those cars? I will like be you? bringing a yep. bunch yep. with me. Hey, you know, uh, yep. we were talking to Ron about the Hot Rod reunion out of Bowling Green. Mm-hmm. Well, that's June 19th through the 21st. Bowling Green, Kentucky. Come on down. I'm going to be there. Visit the Curry Headman booth. Meet me. Get some free Speed Scene Live stickers. Plus, watch great nostalgia racing racing and see hundreds of show cars and well you know what you might get a chance to see a little red nova like this uh, well, not the purple Nova. That's no, uh, Randy, Randy yeah, Wilson. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. I don't think he's going to be there. But no. the little red Nova, that there one right is. there, that'll be there at Bowling Green, <laughs> Kentucky. Uh, June 26th through the 28th, that's going to be the second annual Lone Star Summer Shootout at Big Country Wasteway in Al- Al- how- how- Abilene. Abilene. Thank you, Abilene, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> All right, for those of you hot rodders out there, this weekend up in Bakersfield, it's the NSRA West Coast Nationals. I'll be there. Stop by the AAA booth. That sounds great. We'll be back next week. And, uh, yeah, we won't be goofing off next week like we did last week. We're, we're sure. here to work. Work. Oh, yes. <laughs> work, work, work it. We'll see you then. <laughs> Bruce, you want to take it away? But before Good. we leave, we want to say, hey, Rich, have another margarita for us at Blue Agave. Mm. <laughs> hey, fine idea. That's a fine idea. All right, here comes the encore presentation of tonight's show. Again, thanks for joining us tonight for our, uh, our our brief hiatus and then return. And we're back one week from right now, right here at Speed Scene Live. Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, m h Tires, Headman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheBoat.com. 